Good morning, St. Margaret's. It's good to see you and good to be with you on this, the last Sunday of the Epiphany. As you might imagine, uh, Lent's coming up. Uh, in fact, it's two or three days away, and uh, Shrove Tuesday is Tuesday, and we're going to have a little pancake competition. So you can definitely reach back and get your old standby uh, Krusty's pancakes. It's not an ad for them, but they do make the best uh, add water pancakes that I've ever had. Or you can go with the, uh, the youth group recipe that's all over the place. Uh, but make some light, fluffy pancakes. Take a picture send it in and um, see if you win. But we'll have three prizes and just have a fun time with that. But you, you got to do something. And then, uh, of course, for Ash Wednesday, we'll, again, we will not have in-person services yet. Um, but we will have, a, I think we'll have something that's going to be pretty neat. Um, it's around the words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. Or we're going to talk a bit more just about dirt. So um, hold on your hats for that. But again, we'll have four different meditations. And I think we'll have enough to just uh, just to you know, push you forward through uh, through our through again Ash Wednesday and, even, and more importantly through Lent. Speaking of our returning and um, in-person gatherings, we're still a bit out. We're in a wait and see mode right now. We need to see where these variants go. There's a lot of talk about them and some of it doesn't look good. We don't know yet, but we're um, just going to err on the side of safety. Encourage people to get vac um, vaccinations and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, with cross your fingers, everything goes right. We could get back by uh, Easter and that would be a goal, but no promises, but we'd like to get there. And we're all working on that, but we do need to be safe. Okay. What else? I think, um, I think that's about it for right now. That should be enough for you. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But again, um, happy, uh, happy Valentine's Day, happy President's Day weekend, ha happy uh, end of uh, Epiphany. And so we stand on the eve of uh, another Lent. Good morning, St. Margaret's family, and welcome to this last Sunday before Lent, which is just crazy to think about. We are already here. And I also wish each and every one of you our happiest Valentine's Day. It's a day to celebrate love. Um, we're celebrating love of neighbor, love of God, and especially we can celebrate right now together the fact that we are God's beloved and He loves us so much. And that's a big thing that's happening this weekend. Just yesterday, we were celebrating Absalom Jones, who was the first black man ever ordained to be a priest in the Episcopal Church. And so we are celebrating what it means to manifest love instead of manifesting fear. And President's Day weekend coming up, Ash Wednesday coming up on Wednesday, we are seeing love manifested everywhere. And that's what we've been studying even in book study. We've been talking about love is the way and how that multiplies in our lives and in others' lives. And so with that, let us get ourselves centered and focus on the fact that we are God's beloved and take the time to rejoice in that. Deep breath. Let us begin. Blessed to be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed to be God's reign now and forever. Amen. And together across all of our homes, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. 
When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha says, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said, said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, please tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Lord, the God of hosts, has spoken. He has called the earth from its rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we did not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus Christ's sake. For it is the God who said, let shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared with them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. 
As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And in celebration of manifesting love more and more so and how we can study that together, I'm going to hand over this book over to Father Rob now. Good morning, St. Margaret's and beyond. It's good to see you and good to be with you on this, the last Sunday after the Epiphany and the celebration of Valentine's Day. I'm coming to you today in front of the Wall of Love. This is what I call the Wall of Love. This is the latest um, quilt that's being made at the sweatshop over here. And you can see the L and the O. And there's a V and an E down below, just so you know. Um, but yeah, he is figuring Valentine's Day. Why not come to you from, from the place of love? Oh, what's that? Is, Mother Casey, come on in. Well, what, you, you can't, you're, you're in a hurry, but you what? You've got a book? Oh, thank you so much. Mother Casey just brought in, speaking of love, just brought in a little love is the way as we celebrate Valentine's Day. And so thank you, Mother Casey. Yes, I will go ahead and experience this and then pass it on to Father Earl. There you go. Love is the way. So with that, let us say a prayer and jump on in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, grant us serenity to accept those things we cannot change, the courage to change those things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I might have mentioned last week uh, that uh, I've been really excited, excited and terrified by this new place I've come to with the Gospel of Mark. And by that I mean after preaching for you know over 30 plus years and over half my life, engaging with uh, various texts and especially with Mark, um, I've, I've just had some new insights here that uh, about this juxtaposition concept that I mentioned last week and just seeing it over and over. And I, it, it's just exciting because it's, it feels so new. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a, um, just, just an insight like this in quite a while. And so it's fun to have that during the Epiphany season. So I'm excited about that part, about seeing uh, Mark in a new way and seeing how far this goes. But in the meantime, it's been great. Terrified because... It's a very good chance that this was all uh, appeared in like my first year of seminary and I just kind of dazed off and was looking outside and maybe missed something. So terrified that someone's going to come along and go, hey, you know, if you had actually listened in you know, while you were in school, you would have heard all this. So there's that. And of the two, there's a very good chance that that's what happened. So with that, I, uh, I'll jump on in. But but again, this idea of juxtaposition. So you might, you know, might um, remember that right at the start of this text it says six days later so what are the six days later and it was probably on jesus peter's confession you know where jesus basically gathers everyone together and says you know here's the deal um here's the strategy um, we're going to go to Jerusalem. You can imagine all the disciples leaning in like, all right, this is it. We're finally going to get the battle plan. And he goes, we're going to go to Jerusalem. And instead of like getting all kinds of, you know, other people who are going to surround us and take the capital, Jesus says, I'm going to die. And Peter says, whoa, what is going on here? And immediately rebukes Jesus. And Jesus turns and he's listening to Peter. And he, he begins to say, Peter, you are not using your right mind. You're using your, if you will, your small mind. You are thinking um, and coming from a bad place of wisdom, the wisdom of human beings and not of the wisdom of God. But it's this small-minded thing. I, you know, it's a, a phrase that's used in some other trend, uh, traditions, but it's a great concept. We all have a small mind. It's a small mind that it, it's nothing wrong with it. And it's not about, it's not about being, you know, not being smart, but the small mind is this part of us that it, it's a part of us that has shaped us it's who we are it's our background it's our family it's all our experiences in life it's how we the lens through which we see things and so it, you can imagine that when you start talking about god you can't ever you know think that the small mind is going to be able to comprehend god and so that's the simple part about this is jesus just saying hey you can't do this it's not going to work and so you can imagine that happens there so now mark has to have if you will, the counter experience, if you will, something else that's different. And what does he do? He moves to the greatest experience of all time, the transfiguration, the juxtapose, 
this situation of a small mindedness versus big mindedness. Or if you know, like Paul likes to say, the mind of Christ. And how do you get to the mind of Christ? How do we get to that well, that, that lake, if you will, that place where there is plenty, plenty of, of peace and serenity and, and, and faith and hope and love to absorb, if you will, last week, that concept of salt? Where is that place and how do we get there? And so the transfiguration is a great experience for that because it's all about experience. Because look what happens here. Once again, we're told that as we're up in the mountain, this thing happens out of nowhere. No one sees it coming. And all of a sudden, Peter um, and James and John are witnessing a Jesus they've never seen before. And what does Peter do? Once again, he engages his small mind. So his idea is, let's just go build something. You know, he's listening to the small mind, which says, don't just stand there do something. And that's what he starts to do. And so Mark kind of makes fun of him. John does the same thing. Um, but he says, like, Peter didn't know what to do. Because you see, you can't know what to do whenever we're trying to engage with God with our small mind. We will never know. And so Peter doesn't hear because he's trying to, again, use his small mind to comprehend something that is way beyond him. And so And so, again, Mark makes this point. And then, and then God leans in and God says, look, just listen to him. Quit being so busy and just take a pause and just listen. And it's not about you. And that's a great message for us, it seems to me, as we stand here on the precipice of a, another Lent where, you know, we could go through a good stretch of it without being with each other and all the rest of the stuff we're dealing with. And, and, and what's the message for us? And it seems to me, it's, again, as, as we go through this thing, there's no way we can comprehend what we're going through, much less where is God if we're using our small mind in the midst of this, this, this time that we, we're experiencing. The only way we can do so is to re-engage our larger mind, the experiential part of life. And seeing the experiential part, it, it, it just it is a combination, if you will, of using our intellect or our wisdom, if you will, but also feeling our way in. And we have to be able to do that. And so in this day, as as God is just going off and the whole universe is just on fire and, and it's all being channeled right through Jesus Christ and he is as white, his clothes are as white as snow. Peter is going to be on the ground building booze? No, that's not what you do. You, you look up, you know, you experience. And so this is what it seems God is calling, not seems, this is what God is calling us to do as we get ready for another Lent, is to experience, 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 experience. Get out of our small mind and find that bigger well. And we do that by, by experiencing God, not just by thinking about God. And again, by not trying to put every, not trying to put everything together, but just understanding that some things we just won't understand for right now. There's a great simple story about uh, this holy man that was in the Himalayas and he had a little sign that said, uh, for two cents, you know, experience God. And so people came from miles around. How can you do this for two cents? And you got there and there's a little bowl. You put your two cents in and you went over to the holy man and he has some little teeny tweezers and he would pull out two or three grains of sugar. And he would put them in the palm of the head and say, eat those. And that was it. That's the story. It's not one of those, you know, weird little stories. But the whole point there is there's nothing more. You know, this is about experience, experience, experience. And when we try to go ahead and think about things, you know, like think about the holy man there. He didn't say, what does it taste like? Tell me what you see. None of that can happen because you can't, you can't explain sweetness. You can only experience it. And you can't explain God's presence. You can only experience. And you can't explain what God has in store for you. You can only experience your way through it. And that's what we're called to do. And so in this day of a celebration of uh, St. Patrick, you know, St. Patrick's Day of Valentine's Day and of love, uh, let's not talk about love. Let's go out and experience. So as just as I'm standing in front of the wall of love, um, find your own wall of love. Find a place where you can go ahead and experience God's presence and God's love for you, knowing that it is far beyond what, what our minds can, can handle. And so with that, um, I'm going to pass along, along a little love here. And so Earl, uh, Casey passed this beautiful, um, beautiful gesture of Love is the way, and so on this day, the message is very clear. Love is the way. So I'm going to give this over to you. Hey, um, well, I'll be right back. I'm going to go see Earl, but I'm going to pass him the book. And so with that, um, God bless you. And let us go ahead and experience God's presence and God's love on this day. All right, Earl, see you later. See you later. Why, thank you so much, Rob. I hope you and Michelle are having a lovely Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for the message of your sermon, and thank you so much of this message of our book, study book, Love is the Way. 
And now let us all join together as we confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We lift up these prayers to you, Almighty God, and we ask your Holy Spirit for guidance as we continue the journey of making the love in our way in our life. For those times that we have fallen short, let us bow our heads and we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And now, Father James, I know we have a couple things to do first, but I pass this book unto you, and I wish you and Joanne a very happy and lovely Valentine's Day. And while the book is making its way from Father Earl and Father James, we're going to take a quick little moment to celebrate a birthday and anniversary. This week, we are celebrating Kim's birthday. Kim is our finance extraordinaire here at St. Margaret's. And so if everybody will extend out their hand while we share a blessing for you, Kim. Watch over Kim, O oh Lord, as her days increase. Bless her and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sad. Raise her up as she falls, and in her heart, may your peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of her life. Amen. Again, happy birthday to you, Kim, and it's, thank you for all the brightness that you bring into the office and all you do to take care of us here at St. Margaret's. And also, speaking of taking care of us here at St. Margaret's, through the gift of music and through our um, organ music and through our choir. We have a huge thanks to Susan Rumberg, who is celebrating her 40th anniversary with Bruce. So happiest 40th anniversary to Susan and Bruce. 
And if I understand correctly, I believe she got married in this picture from St. Michael's, which is up in Anaheim. It's actually one of the first churches that was built in a diocese. So a little fun um, trivia there. And she was married by her dad, who was a rector up there. So with that, again, let's extend our hand to share this anniversary blessing to you, Bruce and Susan. Oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on Susan and Bruce. Grant them your blessing and keep them in your grace. That with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep their promises and vows. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And again, happiest anniversary to you, Bruce and Susan, and we are so grateful for the gift of music that you have blessed us all these years, Susan. Happy Valentine's Day.
God be with you. Let us pray. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, he may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness that you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent in to be incarnate of the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for us, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. A spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion. You may pray with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. 
Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood to, as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and the love of God out of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, your families, and your loved ones, on this blessed Valentine's Day and forevermore. Amen. May the peace of God be always with you. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh